Learning how to make a bar bending schedule is the most important skill that every civil engineer and quantity surveyor should know. It essentially helps us to know exactly how many steel bars you need for your project. You understand structured drawings properly in detail and also provides the cutting length and the bar bend shape that can clearly be understood by everyone on site. In this video, you are going to learn exactly how to prepare a bar bending schedule accurately the easiest possible way that literally anyone on this planet can understand. Let's begin with the base of footing. Let's first clearly understand what each of the above means. Reference number simply means a unique identifier assigned to each steel bar, for example, one, two, three, among others. Under the description is where we draw the shape of the steel bars, for example, the footing, column starter bars, among others. This is the bar mark, which is the same as the bar code. For example, if you come across this in your structured drawing, this simply means the bar mark, which is the same as the bar code. These bar marks or bar codes show us where steel bars start and end from. Therefore, the bar mark can be 11, it can be 20, it can be 08, or any other number. The type of mark simply means the bar thickness. Therefore, under type of mark, we can simply put H12, H16, H10, depending on the bar diameter of the steel bar. Therefore, under type of mark, we simply put the bar diameter. Number of members simply means the number of structural elements that are similar. For example, if we have two bases or footings labeled as F4 throughout our entire structure, we put here as 2. If we have one pad or footing, say F5, we put here as 1. If we have 7 similar footings, we write here as 7 among others. If each footing has 22 bars in each, the total number here will be 44. These alphabetical letters denote each side of a steel bar shape, meaning if this is the steel bar for the footing, this is side A, this is side B, and this is side C. Therefore, considering a steel bar for the footing with 350 millimeters here, 1.7 meters along this longer side and 350 millimeters also here, A is 350 millimeters, B is 1.7 meters and C as 350 millimeters. For this last column, we add these alphabetical letters to come up with this total cutting length. We are going to look at an example of a four-storied building. The concept remains the same for projects bigger than this or projects smaller than this. And by the end of this video, you will have known how to prepare the bar bending schedule for pads or footings. I explain this in the most understandable way that literally anyone on this planet can understand. We prepare a bar bending shade using structured drawings. This is the foundation layout for block A and this is the foundation layout for block B. Let's write here as pad footings or bases. Basically, there are two kinds of pad footings. One with bottom bars and top bars and then the other with only bottom bars. The second one is the most common one. I'm going to show you exactly how to prepare its bar bending schedule, so be sure to watch this video till the end. But first, let's begin with the one with the bottom bars and top bars. This can be understood clearly with an example. Let's begin with base F2B. This is its section and this is the top view. From the top view, we can clearly confirm that this is the shape of the steel bar for the footing. We get the development length for the footing bars following the drawing for the section. The thickness of the whole base or footing is 450 mm. When we deduct the 50 mm concrete cover at the top and 50 mm concrete cover at the bottom, we remain with 350 mm. We then deduct the 50 mm space between the two development lengths, the one at the top and the one at the bottom. We leave this 50 mm space because we do not want these top bars and bottom bars to get into contact with each other. Therefore, 350 mm minus 50 mm as this space here will remain with 300 mm. 300 mm divided by 2 we get 150 mm. 150 mm is the development length for the top bars, same also for bottom bars. This distance can be got using the top view of the base or footing. Therefore, from here up to here, it shows us that this footing is 2.2 meters. When we deduct a 50 mm spacer block this side and another spacer block of 50 mm this other side, this actual distance for the steel bar will be 2.1 meters. The structure drawing details that for this base F2B, along its longer side, it has 20 H12, bar mark or bar code 7, 
150mm spacing for bottom one and top one, so this is the bar mark or the barcode. We fill the field for the barcode here as 7. The type of mark is H12 which is the same as the bar thickness. How many F2Bs do we have in our second table? We have 4, so we fill this field as 4. How many steel bars does each base or footing have? We check on the structure drawings for the base. These steel bars are of this shape but running along this direction, meaning we get this distance of 3.2 meters. We deduct 50 millimeters spacer block on one side and also 50 millimeters spacer block on the other side to remain with 3.1 meters. To get the number of steel bars that can fit in a 3.1 meters space, we come to our first table here. 3.1 meters falls in between here. It falls between 3 meters, 150 millimeters, and exactly 3 meters. So when we get 3.1 meters and we deduct 3 meters, 150 millimeters, we remain with 50 millimeters. And also, 3.1 meters minus 3 meters exactly we remain with 100 millimeters meaning we take the closest which is 3 meters 150 millimeters in other words we take the closest therefore we have 22 steel bars that we need to cover a distance of 3.1 meters remember we have bottom one and top one meaning 22 multiplied by 2 we get 44 steel bars we fill this column as 44 steel bars since we have four footings of the same kind as f2b we get 44 multiplied by 4 to get 176 steel bars under here we have 150 millimeters 2.1 meters and 150 millimeters when we add these three, we get 2.4 meters as the cutting length. This was bottom one and top one, do the same for bottom two and top two. Therefore, as the engineer on site, you will tell the steel fixers or steel benders to cut 176 pieces of 2.4 meters each to accommodate for bottom one and top one steel bars for bases or pad footings of F2B. And if you want to get the number of steel bars here, you simply get 2.4 meters multiplied by the 176 pieces to get 422.4 meters. Since the standard length of one steel bar is 12 meters, you get 422.4 divided by 12 to get 36 steel bars. So when you go to the hardware or store, you purchase 36 steel bars of Y12 to accommodate for bottom one and top one steel bars for bases or footings of F2B. In reality, this is bottom 1, then this is bottom 2, and this is top 1 and top 2. The second base is F4A, and on the foundation plan, it is here. We have two of them of the same kind, meaning they have the same dimensions. This is the top view, and this is the section for pad F4A. Its shape will be like this. We get this development length from the section here. This is 450 millimeters. When we deduct 50 mm spacer block or concrete cover on top and 50 mm concrete cover at the bottom, we remain with 350 mm. Meaning the development length here is 350 mm, same as here. Development length simply means this extra length on the steel bar that transfers load or stress from the steel bar to the concrete. This base or footing only has bottom bars, meaning it has only bottom 1 and bottom 2. We get this longer side along the top view, meaning this will be 1.8 meters minus 50 millimeters concrete cover this side and 50 millimeters concrete cover this other side. Therefore, we shall remain with 1.7 meters. You also have to note that we shall be using 50 millimeters as the concrete cover everywhere in the foundations, 25 millimeters for the beams, slabs, staircases, and then 30 millimeters for columns. We also use 40 millimeters as concrete covers for the lift shaft wall. Concrete covers act as protection to the steel in the structure members. We put them at the bottom and in the sides. The bar mark or bar code here is 11. Type of mark or bar thickness is H12. Number of members will be 2 since we have 2 bases or footings of F4A of a similar kind with the same dimensions. Number of steel bars here will be 1.8 minus 50 millimeters minus 50 millimeters for concrete covers both sides to remain with 1.7 meters. 1.7 meters falls close to 1 meter 650 millimeters, meaning we need 12 steel bars. 
Since it's for bottom 1 and bottom 2, this will be 24 steel bars. 24 multiplied by 2, we get 48 pieces with the dimensions of 350mm for both development length and 1.7m along this longer side. Total here will be 350mm plus 1.7m plus 350mm to get 2.4m. We shall cut 48 pieces with 2.4m long and then later bend them to this shape then tied or fixed in the base. To understand this clearly, when determining the cutting length of the steel bar in the base of footing, we first find the development length which we determine using the sectional drawing. For example, if this is 450mm total footing depth, we deduct 50mm concrete cover at the top and 50mm concrete cover at the bottom to remain with 300mm. Get 300mm divided by 2 to get the top development length and bottom development length which will be 150mm for top bars and 150mm for bottom bars. If the base of footing only has bottom bars and with depth as 450mm, get 450mm, deduct 50mm concrete cover at the top and 50mm concrete cover at the bottom to remain with 350mm. This 350mm will be the development length in this case. 2. We determine the longer side of the steel bar. We determine this distance by using a top plan. For these shorter steel bars, they cover the longer side of the base of footing, meaning they cover from here up to here. So when we deduct 50mm spacer block this side and 50mm spacer block this other side, for example for this case, this is 1m950 minus 50mm minus 50mm also to make it 1m850 mm. 3 is to determine the steel bars that we need to fit in a certain distance. To determine the steel bars that we need for a certain distance, we come to our first table here. If you can conceptualize this, shorter steel bars will be very many because they will be covering along the longer side. And then on the other hand, longer steel bars will be very few because they cover the shorter side in the base of footing we simply follow a table that we prepare before to avoid wastage of time. For example, we know that when I have a spacing of 1.2 meters, I need 9 steel bars. For a distance of 3 meters, we need 21 steel bars. For a distance of 3.6 meters, we need 25 steel bars, among other distances. For a distance that falls in between here, for example 1 meter, it falls in between here 1 meter minus 900 millimeters, we get 100 millimeters. 1 meter minus 1 meter 50 millimeters, we get 50 millimeters, which means 1 meter 50 millimeters is the closest, meaning for a distance of 1 meter, we need 8 steel bars. When you want to know the number of steel bars to be purchased or bought for a given footing, for example, footing F2A, we find out that the cutting length for a single steel bar is 2.2 meters. Remember, we need 150 pieces. 2.2 multiplied by 150 pieces, we get 330 meters. The standard length for one steel bar is 12 meters. So when you get 330 meters divided by 12 meters, you get 28 pieces. Meaning we need 28 H12 steel bars for footing F2A. And that's how we simply know the number of steel bars required and their cutting length for the foundation. Watch this next video here on the right where I show you exactly how to determine the cutting length for column starter bars and how to know the quantity of steel bars required for column starter bars. This is very important because this is where many people make mistakes from. I show you how to prepare the bar bending schedule for column starter bars the right way. I hope you don't want to miss this.